Hello guys, welcome back to another lead code problem solving video. Today we're going to be solving this Google interview question. It's invert binary tree. This is a classic question. I've seen this question a few times already. I would say let's start with reading the problem and then let's proceed to point some things out before we jump into, into the code. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. The problem says given the root of a binary tree, invert the tree and return its root. Okay, pretty straightforward. Basically, we're going to get, as we see here in the visual down here, we get a tree, which is four, two, seven, one, and three, six, and nine. And we have to traverse every node of that tree and basically swap positions of the children nodes and then return the root. Notice how the input, it's a vector or an array. And obviously we have to get familiar with things like imagining the data structure as we see the array right let's say in the array we know the four or the first element right here is going to be the root of the node the subsequent two nodes are going to be the children of that node the subsequent two are going to be the children of the previous node and the last two are going to be the children or the of the previous node okay so it works this way let's say two and seven are the children of four one and three are the children of two and six and nine are the children of seven. Okay, so notice how that works. That's, you know, something that I feel like you should get familiar with. In my particular case, it helped me to do flashcards. I would do a bunch of flashcards with arrays or maps, depending on the type of question. And visualizing these things would definitely, over and over, would definitely help me to engrave it into my, my head. Okay, so yeah going moving forward with the other example again we get a binary tree is not any other tree that has zero or two nodes okay a binary tree basically the definition is a tree that has from zero to two children nodes and we can see that here four has two and seven two has one and three seven has six and the you know leaf nodes down here have no children so perfect definition for binary tree same case here okay so we see how after the algorithm after we traverse the whole tree and we basically swap positions with the tree with the nodes we get the mirror image i would say of the tree okay and these are you know very six examples to understand once you visualize it would be harder if they take this away from us obviously but anyways it's the same thing you get your root node it's two children root node doesn't change and then you basically swap the two children constraints said that basically from zero to a hundred nodes we're gonna have in our in our binary tree or from one to 99 edges, which is basically the levels we're going to be going traversing down to swap the elements, the numbers in the nodes or the value of the node. It's going to go from negative to negative 100 to 100. So pretty straightforward. I would say, you know, for this type of tree, for this size of tree, we're looking for a linear solution. At least anything greater than that would probably be too slow or inefficient. I would say, you know, a hundred nodes, it's, it's a distance side tree. It's not huge, right? But we can still do very good on a linear solution and the space complexity. And I'm going to go into talking in you know a little hints about the problem but basically the space complexity it's going to depend how we solve the problem and what i mean by that is that iteratively you can have a solution it's going to be end time it's going to be linear time okay because iteratively you would create some extra data structure let's say a stack to keep track of the levels you're going you're exploring in your dfs algorithm which is basically what we're going to be doing here okay so I already know from straight shot that this problem is going to be solved by a DFS. It's something that I've seen. I've seen it before. I've seen this problem before. So, you know, continuing with my grind 75 over here, you know, binary tree is something that I've done already. So yeah, just figure, let me go ahead and solve it here, post it and explain my approach. So the first thing we need to do, and before I start, I want to make a quick parenthesis for my people watching this video just bear with me for a little bit because i recently purchased something that it's slowing my productivity in general my words per minute are very low right now making a bunch of mistakes i bought this thing not i'm not sure if you're familiar with it but it's the kinesis keyboard kinesis advantage 360 pretty cool i'm pretty i'm loving it so far but again you're gonna see me make mistakes as i type i'm trying to 
touch type without looking at the keyword that hasn't happened yet this is my second week trying it out so if you want to know more about this thing just let me know i'll be happy to make some more comment and i don't know maybe a video about it not sure but yeah just bear with me as i solve the problem so first let's go ahead and jump into the solving the problem so first we're going to uncomment this part right here because we have the definition of a node in our tree okay and in python very straightforward we're defining a class tree node which has three parameters the value of the node the left pointer and the right pointer notice how the definition of these pointers is null for now or none but basically we're defining a node where you know it has a value and left pointer and right pointer to the next node okay so the first thing i want to do here is i could solve this in multiple ways i could solve it straightforward in here with the definition we have here or i can create a helper function which is the approach i like to use i'm going to create a helper function that's going to be called dfs and basically with dfs what i'm going to be doing is i'm going to grab a node and in that node i want to make sure i i check if the node's empty right because let's say we're right here and there's no more nodes down here then there's nothing to swap or return okay so if we get to four and four it's a singular node which could be the case okay remember the constraint we could have either none or up to a hundred so if we get to four and there's nothing else to explore then there's nothing to swap so we just simply return that so the way to do that is we're going to say if the node we are exploring is basically empty or we're going to say is none then we can safely say just simply go ahead and return the function because there's nothing to swap and that's it that's how we're going to return the function right there now if that's not the case we're going to do dfs now in python we can use something that's called unpacking and unpacking it's going to say well grab that node left pointer and remember i have the pointer at my disposal i grab my node at the left i grab my node at the right and i basically swap okay so how am i gonna swap those that i'm gonna say node left is gonna be equal node at right and my node at right is going to be equal to my node at left so i'm basically swapping positions with the node once I check the node is not empty, then I can do that, okay? The next thing I want to do is call recursion because I want to make sure I swap every node and this is where I swap, okay? So I explore a node, I grab a node, I check if it's empty. If it's not empty, then I can swap its children nodes, okay? The way I do that is I'm going to call DFS on each, each children node, okay? So I'm going to call first on node left. Basically, this is we're going to do pre-order traversal here, OK, which it's going to explore the, the left node first, then it's going to explore the root node and then it's going to explore the right node. So since I want to swap both nodes first, I'm going to call the FS on the left node and then I'm going to call the FS on the right node. OK, so pretty straightforward till there. Then once that's done i checked my node I, I make sure it's not empty if it's not empty i go ahead and swap it the nodes okay my left node becomes my right node becomes my left node call the recursion call i basically call the function on that left node making sure if i'm here making sure i explore both children nodes of my node and same thing on the right side make sure i explore all the levels down after that i could basically get out of my dfs function i could basically say i'm done with dfs function now i need to backtrack now i need to go back to the root and call dfs okay because i'm going each node now but remember i have to go back and explore the the root node and make sure that the root node also swaps or not my root node but my parent node i mean so i gotta make sure my parent node also swaps with its subsequent node so I'm going to call the FS on my root node. And that's how I do that. I'm going to give me myself a space here. Once I call that recursive call there, then I can basically return my function and I'll be pretty much done with 
I can return my root because that's what's asking for. And I'm pretty much done with my code at this point. Okay, so check my check that my node's not empty. If it's not empty, swap its children. Recursive call on the left node, recursive call on the right node. And again, remember that recursive call is going to go. It's going to put a hold on everything and it's going to go and check for its children node. Okay, once that's done, it's going to go up put a hole on everything else and then it's going to go and check my right node okay once i finish with all that i apply that to the whole root and then i return my root and that should be the solution i'm going to go ahead and submit my code i'm actually going to use the shortcut for this so i start getting used to it and yeah beautiful so i'm going to analyze the complexity here i already said the time complexity is going to be linear okay because basically you know we're applying a we're applying a recursion call on the size of the node okay and we're gonna explore every single node of that tree so that's linear now space complexity is going to be a little different because it's going to be basically big o of h h representing the height of the tree why well because in the worst case we're gonna have to explore every single level and the stack call in our in our recursion call, it's going to have to hold all the levels, right? Let's say we have 99 edges and our recursion call has to go all the way down to that last level, swap the notes, pop that from the stack and continue going, okay? So, you know, obviously the last level of our node right here is the top of the stack, okay? So basically I can represent this like this, the last level of my of my tree structure is at top of my stack once i'm done with that level i pop that from the stack go to level 98 pop that from the stack and so forth so basically you know we could say that's linear space but that's not really linear space because it's going to depend on this on the height of the tree and that's another particular thing of three data structures okay perfect i think this is the solution of today for this google interview question if you have any other question you want me to explore, just let me know. If you enjoy the video, subscribe, thumbs up. Thank you for your support. I really appreciate you watching this video. You helped me a lot doing that on my journey to getting a job in tech. And I'm not going to stop until I get it. So you guys better be ready. We're competing. No, I'm joking. Thank you so much for your support, guys. I'll see you in the next one.